distinguished ladies, excellencies that are here, please, I want you to jam your hands together as I bring to the I invite to the podium our former head of state, General Yakubu Gawan, the convener. And the president of Nigeria Praise Movement. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. A round of applause. You're welcome, sir. Kindly be seated. Kindly be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Greetings to you all. In the precious name of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Are you all seated? My goodness. Well, well, well. My God, thank you, my goodness. Well, you will have to pardon my inability to contain my fascination and admiration of this magnificent house of prayer. This magnificent house of God, successfully midwife by the Deeper Christian Life Ministry. The pictures of this edifice that I have seen do not totally do justice uh, to what I am seeing here now. I think Queen of Sheba said the same thing about King Solomon. The architect must have been a true disciple of King Solomon and must have been truly inspired by the Holy Spirit to have come up with a structure so close to capturing the size and beauty of God's handiwork. Now, is that King Solomon's disciple here? Wherever you are, stand up and be recognized. Is that architect or architects, are they here? If they are, stand up and be recognized. So don't you worry, I recognize you. <laughs> uh, this is beautiful from outside, inside, sideways, north, south, east, west. Down up, down there, gracious, excellent. So it is with joy that I'm here today to worship with all kingdom workers, especially the general superintendent of the Deeper, life, uh, deeper Christian Life Ministry, Pastor W. F. Kumui, <laughs> uh, 
uh, who are always and often referred to as a great mathematician for Christ. Yes, see the number that he has brought here for Christ and the ones outside. Now, as I say, a great mathematician for Christ, alongside his twin brother, mathematician for Christ, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, <laughs> Pastor E. A. Adeboye. These two have always called mathematicians for Christ because they specialize in mathematics. They were great in mathematics, first class in mathematics. Shall I tell them which university? Well, you know which university. So greetings also, may I say greetings also to Sister Esther Kumoye. Sister Kumoye, the dear wife of Pastor Kumoye. Over the years, I have watched with great admiration. Whoops. Can you just put it on the ground there? It's better. Make sure that it doesn't. Thank you. Over the years, I have watched with great admiration his personal life, Pastor Kumui's personal life, his ministry and his love of country. He is such a gifted man and a dedicated Christian who has walked his talk in fulfilling the purpose of God for his life and ministry. You will later on hear from him because he is the one to preach to us later on. We want to thank you immensely for organizing and hosting this national prayer service and doing me the honor of getting all of you, your excellencies, governors, deputy governors, your Lordships, your Highnesses, eminent and distinguished invited faithful people, and of course, the rest of us, my brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for coming. God bless you all. I bring you, I bring you the warmest greetings from the Nigeria Praise Organization whose vision and mission is to mobilize all Nigerians to offer regular, fervent and result-oriented prayers for the healing and transformation of the nation. This it has done for the past 22 years, visiting every state of the Federation and the federal capital as well, and also now doing it on a zonal basis, the six geopolitical zones. By the grace of God, Nigeria has been able to mobilize 
All faithful Nigeria Press has been able to mobilize all faithfuls of all denominations to pray in unity through prayer rallies and intercessory prayers and activities presenting to every Nigerian, irrespective of denominational affiliation, the opportunity to be involved in the effort of rebuilding the nation, promoting the virtues of patriotism, transparency, incorruptibility in the leadership and the citizenry. I salute and welcome you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we stand together in unity under one God to raise an altar of prayer unto him, not being a preacher anywhere near the caste in the mold of Pastor Kumui, and all of you are fathers and mothers in the Lord that are here. Let me simply use this opportunity to remind us of God's admonition that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Chronicle chapter 11, verse uh, chapter 7, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. God's words speak so eloquently to the situation of Nigeria today and I believe all times, at all times, yesterday and today, past and present. For this reason, the church needs to continue to stand in the gap for our nation. The church must provide a moral compass for the nation and cause darkness to recede and warn people to heed to truth, imbibe the fear of God, and to follow righteousness. Brethren, it is important to remind us that the church is God's house of prayer. With the general elections looming ahead, it is natural for people to become anxious and fearful of what the future holds for Nigeria. In the light of the wanton killings in the land, be this politically motivated or executed by the dark agents of insurgency like Boko Haram, or by armed cattle herdsmen and rustlers, aside the challenges of politics, there is also the problem of economic hardship that has not only made the poor poorer, but drastically reduced the quality of life of even the rich or politically influential. More than ever before, therefore, there is great need for us, children of God, men and women of faith, young and old, to come together to pray and intercede for our dear nation and its people. So, whatsoever the provocation, whatsoever the threat, 
for the sake of our country, for the love of our country, Nigerian Christians should never resort to a retaliation that would or could lead to a religious war uh, in the future. But I called on the authority to provide the necessary physical protection for all while your prayers your prayers and Christian love and charity provide the ultimate solution for the peace and accord of our country. Praise must rise to God in unity from every corner of the Nigerian church to combat the forces that militate against the progress of our nation. God's solution to the problems of this country is not, is not to be found only in guns, retaliation, or physical weapons, but in Holy Spirit-directed, believing and prevailing prayer from his people, the church who are willing to confess and forsake sins and embrace righteousness. As the psalmists say in Psalm 133, verses 1 to 2, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and peace. May I urge the church and the people of Nigeria to embrace, to embrace the spirit of love, patriotism and commitment to the good of our nation, irrespective of political party or religious affiliations or tribal differences. As citizens of this great nation, we all have important roles to play in the development of our nation. We must seek to live in peace with all men and deliberately walk at achieving reconciliation amongst all our peoples. I say this mindful of the concerns that have been raised by Christians across the country over the growing spate of the killings of our brethren that have been recorded and reported nationwide and internationally. Truth be told, these are genuine concerns. Should this lead us to contemplating retaliations or reprisals attack. The scriptures you know, are clear. Vengeance, vengeance is of the Lord. We must steer clear of any semblance of encouraging religious warfare in the guise of self-defense but we must continually demand that government be seriously alive to its primary responsibility of the protection of life and property of all citizens, whoever your neighbor is. Whilst government is encouraged to do the needful People of faith also must be encouraged to win over unnecessary angry and violent peoples with the force of Christian love and charity. Yes, it is your prayer that God listens to. It takes a short time, it may take a long time, but you must not cease from, from praying for
for the peace of your country and acting also to ensure that peace for your country. Permit me, therefore, to end this brief remark by once more thanking everyone here present for honoring the invitation to join the quest for national transformation and healing. The quality of attendance has convinced me that we, uh, we all agree and are prepared to engage God on behalf of Nigeria. May the Lord guide us in the path of love, peace, truth, righteousness, and justice. I also pray that the land of Nigeria shall receive God's divine visitation and healing in the exalted name of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Lord, heal us and heal our land. Lord, heal us and heal our land. Amen. This is the prayer from all your faithful children and servants. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. May I say thank you very much indeed for listening. And may I say thank you for the congregation, the choir, uh, the choir, or oh, that they are here, the choir, they are there, and sometimes they are here. And uh, all those with the musicians and whatever they do, may I say, well done to you all. Well done to you all. My goodness, haven't we got talent? You've certainly got extraordinary talents here. God bless you, and God bless you in whatever you want to do and achieve. Thank you, thank you. May I ask for God blessing, the God's blessing, the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us here and always. Thank you and God bless.